Hey everybody, this is Joshua with the Tendonitis Expert, and this video is about what causes heel spurs, and why don't doctors have any good answers. So here is the bones of the leg and the feet, here's all the muscles and connective tissue and tendons and ligaments and whatnot that are over those bones. So let's talk about heel spurs. So a lot of people have heel spurs. A lot of people have heel spurs, but they have no symptoms. A lot of people have symptoms. They go get an x-ray, and then they discover heel spurs, and then those heel spurs are declared to be the cause of the pain, which sometimes might be the case. Other times might not be the case. So what causes heel spurs? First off, let's ask, what is a doctor going to tell you? And I'd be curious in your comments below, what did your doctor say when you had a heel spur? What what caused it? Did that even come up? Did anybody ask what caused it? Like, why is it there? Why is it growing? My experience is, from talking with people, that their doctors just don't really give them any good answers. Nothing definitive, nothing clear. It's mostly just a, well, um, yeah, it kind of grew. Maybe due to just some trauma, but there's no, like, specific answer. So let's try and answer that here. First, let's say, where can a bone spur show up? Specifically around the heel. Well, they can kind of show up anywhere, but there's a few spots where they mostly show up. One common spot is under the heel. One spot is kind of back over here where the tendon connects. So a better view might be right there, bone spur. And notice that tendon kind of crosses over, bone spur. And bone spur kind of anywhere around here, there or there or there kind of most anywhere in there. You usually don't see bone spurs in other places. Sure, they can happen, but for the most part, this is where they're going to happen. So why might that be? Bone spurs don't just appear for no reason. They don't just magically show up out of the blue. They don't just appear. The body grows, the body shapes itself, depending on the forces placed upon it. So you'll notice that where these show up, there's a certain amount of force happening. Rarely do you see a bone spur uh, randomly right there, but you see them a lot at the bottom of the heel and around where the Achilles tendon connects. So notice that the Achilles comes and attaches right there, ugh, and it's pulling that way. So it's constantly pulling on the bone. And here with every step, and most people have a heel strike, so they're stepping right there. So all the force hits right there. So remember, the body shapes itself according to the forces placed upon it. So, constant force pulling that way, semi-constant force being applied to the bone that way. So the bone is going to grow... Sorry, let me say that a different way. If the brain thinks that the bone is kind of weak, it's going to tell it to grow more bone tissue to become stronger. That's just kind of basically how it works. So it makes sense that this is where most heel spurs show up, on and around where the Achilles tendon attaches, and where all your force hits when you're taking every step. Because there's a lot of force being applied right there, and so the bone grows a little more to be stronger. The brain thinks it needs to be stronger because it's constantly taking all this impact with every step. So there's a lot of force being applied right there at the heel. That's becoming a big mess. Let's sum that down a little bit. Okay, and the other is, same kind of scenario, but different direction. Here's the tendon. There's muscle. And usually our muscles get too tight. So muscle that should be that long over time become that long. Too short, too tight. So they're constantly pulling on this tendon. And constantly pulling on its attachment, which is the bone right here. So the brain is going to feel that pressure, that tension on the bone. And it's going to lay down more bone and more bone, and more bone, because it wants to become stronger. So that's essentially the mechanism of how bone spurs grow. Sure, sometimes there's some calcium and magnesium issue that might help it go one way or another, and that's more of a bone health thing, and that plays a little role in with the communication with the brain. But essentially, the main cause of bone spurs is pressure and or pulling pressure, which is still pressure. Anything on the bone, too much pressure, the bone is going to build more bone to become stronger. The good news is, a lot of people have bone spurs but no pain. So just because you have a bone spur doesn't necessarily mean that that's causing the pain. 
you can have a bone spur and no pain, or you can have a bone spur with some pain. And usually what that looks like is the bone spur starts growing into the tendon and damaging the tendon. And then a whole mechanism happens from that where signals sent to the brain, the brain thinks there's an injury and a problem, which kind of there is, so it does a bunch of other things like tightens up the muscle, which pulls on that bony spot more, and creates inflammation, which enhances your sensitivity to pain. So you have pain-enhancing chemical floating around, which causes even more pain, which tells the brain to tighten up muscle even more, which pulls even more on the bone. So you can kind of see how there's just more and more different signals that are causing bone to be told to grow. And that is how bone spurs form. If you'd like to know more about bone spurs, visit my website, tendonitisexpert.com, and we'll send you to the Heel Spur Symptoms page.